thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and I uh, must congratulate actually DAP for actually organizing this and remembering Park Sama's uh, birthday. Um, we, we in Perse has been very privileged to actually have Park Sama as one of our co-chair together with of course Ambiga Srinivasan. Um, <clears throat> they have actually led the movement well and uh, the reason why we are here today is really also a result of both their good work and for that I think that we should actually give uh, Pasama and also Amanda <laughs> important is that when we talk about Nagarawan and um, national unity, moderation, we really need to combine and understand that national unity cannot stand alone without democracy in this country. <clears throat> and, um, and that is uh, what I mean by that is really that you know um, you can talk about unity among the races, among the social background and all that. But if, if the people do not have their rights and their freedom and the ability to actually speak up, I think that, you know, um, that unity is only half game. And um, the other thing is that I, I really feel that, you know, Pasama is, a, is, is an inspiration to most of to all uh, Malaysians because he and his work, you can read and you can also see the work that he has done, he has actually been able to combine unity with democracy and he sees the value in actually combining both of these uh, concepts. And in Malaysia, and these are the challenges that we have, where we are on a daily basis facing challenges um, on our own identity, on our uh, economy, uh, on issues of poverty, on religion, and these are things that we would love to actually talk about in Malaysia. But unfortunately, that space is a very limited space presently in Malaysia because when people actually try to talk about it, and to actually give constructive comments on how we can actually amend or change or transform. Repressive laws are being used and repressive laws that are used against almost everyone. Yeah? You can see it being used, uh, particularly the Sedition Act, on lawyers, on uh, activists, on politicians, on bloggers. You name it, um, more or less, most of the people are, have actually um, turned out um, the Sedition Act. And that is a pity because that actually puts the fear in most Malaysians and also the fear about ideas, the fear about having concepts, and the fear of discussing our views openly with each other. And that doesn't actually gel well when we are talking about national unity and democracy in this country. And when we talk about the, uh, the challenges, the other one is that in this country we seem to be dominated by one single ideology, one single-minded ideology which actually curb all kinds of uh, discussion which actually put fear in most of us to actually even talk about uh, issues. And, um, and yet, you know, our leaders don't seem to be giving us that much of a, a direction. Some of our leaders are actually raising national issues and linking these national issues with ethnicity. And of course, the recent one is uh, what Slavri has actually said, where he actually <coughs> asked a boycott of Chinese traders. And, that, and if, if we look at his argument, it is actually flawed. And this is actually proven by the UNDP report, the first report ever done on Malaysia human development 
2014. It was actually published last year, which actually shows that there is, in Malaysia, we have actually gone beyond just inter-ethnic uh, disparity. We are actually now having to talk about intra-ethnic disparity. The disparity that is identified by the UNDP report covers a few. One is female-headed households are facing inequalities, income inequalities. It actually talks about the, the uh, inequalities faced by Bumiputra minorities, which actually covers Sabah, Sarawak, and also the Aura Asli in Peninsular Malaysia. These are the income disparities that are suffered by the people. It also ta tackles um, the fact that these people do not have access to uh, quality education has actually impaired in their ability to also reap the gains from our growth and our development in this country. So these are the issues that we need to tackle instead of instead we are given information that you know price increase is because it has an ethnic argument towards it without actually understanding that there are serious causes towards income disparities and these are the causes that we need to deal with we don't even have a very sustainable economic uh, program that actually really deals with some of these key issues. The other issue is that in, um, in Malaysia, there is this lack of discussion. And as I've mentioned, ideas, concepts and views are actually feared upon. And they are not uh, talked about. And this is something that we need to break away from. Because without actually talking about ideas, without actually coming together as a collective, as a nation, to talk about our, our feelings and our perception and our um, resolution of how we see our economy, our politics, our social and cultural, it will not help our country to actually grow. And I think that, you know, um, there are a few key things that we need to really take into consideration. One is really laws and policy reforms, but they alone cannot actually help us to resolve our problems. It has to be complemented with a full commitment to its implementation. And this is one of the greatest failure in Malaysia. Laws and policies, no matter how good they are, are being made, but yet the implementation has not been carried out in its uh, entirety. And it has actually, and therefore we need to push for the implementation. And we also need to push for the implementation of these laws and policies according to our federal constitution and according to international human rights mechanism, which actually will break up uh, rights and freedom of the people in this country. Secondly is that we need to get rid of repressive laws in this country which actually curbs uh, our ability to actually talk and also our freedom of expression. The other thing is that we also need to reform our institution um, and to allow this institution to be to be fair, to be just, and also to be independent. Particularly, we are talking about uh, the MACC, the Election Commission, um, the police. These are the institutions which actually need a huge reform, an overhaul of these institutions so that we are ensure that you know, um, our interests are actually defended. The other issue is really about corruption. Um, that has to be dealt with in this, um, when we actually even talk about the national unity and democracy. And corruption in this country, while we have the MACC, 
But we know that the MACC has limited powers and is not as effective as we want it to be. And that is the key institution that really needs a full reform. Otherwise, when we talk about growth and development in this country, it will not actually meet the standard that we uh, Malaysians expect. The last thing that I really would want to see happening in Malaysia is really to actually have more discussion, to promote more dialogue and more interaction and consultation amongst not just uh, Malaysian people, but between Malaysian, Malaysians and the government. The government who are actually running this country, for them to actually listen to, the, to what the people want and the interests of our people, particularly in relation to presently we are actually having a delineation exercise that actually has to be reflective of the interests of the people. But what we are getting is that when you actually try to object towards the delineation, we only have half big maps being displayed. And in Sarawak, when they actually say that they have 82 new seats, uh, state seats, there are only 51 displays that are being shown. And on those 51 displays, you are supposed to make your uh, objections. And I think that, you know, these kind of um, unscrupulous and uh, not honest um, actions have to be stopped. And we have to actually, um, as people in Malaysia, we really have to say that, you know, we have enough and that we want a change.